Good morning. So I just need a plan I can stick to on my busiest days, which is which is key, right? When you think about something going forward and, and it puts a lot of people off. People think, you know, I'm not gonna be able to do it all. If I can't do it all, then there's no point even starting. You know, I've said that before. Um, we come out of all these things and and they're they're right in in essence, like you might not be able to do this when you're busier, but you might be able to do this. And and that's the an important point about the best time to start is now, even though even if you are busier than normal, even if you can't give it your all, because if you can do it now, when can't you do it? And you also create habits that you can do that imagine when life actually calms down, it'll be easy. Now, I'm going to give you a few strategies, though, however, that you could do based on what you're willing to do. So, obviously, when it comes to fitting it in when you're busier, whether it's a work project, whether it's just life taking over, there's going to be things that are more difficult at certain times, and other times. Now, obviously, first and foremost, we have to look at the reason why we're actually doing it in the first place. But sometimes we do have to make compromises, but the benefit of making those compromise, compromises, we have to look at the costs and benefits of that. Okay, I'm going to write down everything I eat for three days, let's say argument sake, not for everyone, but, um, but the benefits of this is I'm actually gonna see why something is working or is not working. I'm going to be able to potentially then make them my next step, which will help me lose weight, which will help me fit my clothes better, which will help me get more energy, which will help me um, improve my health outcomes, which will help my fitness level, which will help take the pressure off my joints, my mobility. All these things start to come into it. So first and foremost, we just by putting our attention on them, all of a sudden we're selling the benefits to ourselves and actually we can make a better informed choice and go, actually, it is worth making time for this now. Like, like I talked about before with our live cooking, we do a live cooking every um, Friday where everyone comes in into the kitchen um, or on Zoom and we cook a meal. And a lot of the ladies find it really helpful to, one, they get different ideas, two, it's super powerful to just prep some meals for the week ahead so that we've got that in so that when we are busier, when life does take over, we've got that go-to. And I was chatting to someone yesterday and they were like, yeah, I need, need something super quick um, and easy um, to get started because I'm not really in the mood to cook at the moment. And we spoke about ready meals. And ready meals are surprisingly good um, these days. Like if you w were to look at my stuff like 10 years ago, or maybe 12 years ago, I'd have probably said avoid ready meals, avoid them like processed foods. Now I look at them and I'm thinking, how have you got all that veg, all that protein into one little meal? portions, done, and I think that's, it's, it's definitely a game changer to have, as maybe not the optimal, but as a go-to that you can then go, okay, I'm going to have that now, I'm going to have that when life gets busy. Now, I also want to touch on a few other strategies, and I'm going to talk about this in terms of compensation. So, should, if you eat more, more one day, should you eat less the next? And that's something that comes up a lot, and, and in short, this is a quite a powerful strategy to, to use, which gives you a bit more flexibility. And I'll, I'll describe this now. Let me just get the pen and paper. Pen and paper is coming out. So if we describe this now, let's say someone was on 1,300 calories a day and someone is tracking this, that would be 9,100 a week. So actually they've got a budget across the week. So now, no matter what day it is, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they know they've just got 9,100 to eat across the week. So now that those mini eggs aren't the end of the world. That bit of cheese isn't the end of the world. That quote unquote carbohydrate, bad food, fat gaining food isn't the end of the world. Now we've got a bit of flexibility. Now, the problem with this though, is that it works until it doesn't. Because a lot of people can fall into the trap of then looking at, okay, how much rubbish can I eat um, and get away with it? And that's fine. We know from research that technically you can still get great results with that, depending on what the outcome you're measuring. But from a health point of view, from joints point of view, from your energy levels to how you feel, it's probably not going to be optimal. However, having that flexibility and the psychosocial benefits of being able to give yourself permission to eat whatever you want, just not everything, but whatever you want can be key in sticking to it even when those work meetings come, even when you're busy, even when things take over and life takes over. However, if you're falling into that trap of like, 
um, I'll eat less today because I ate more yesterday. And you're constantly going deeper, deeper, but then we skip breakfast, eat as little as possible in the day, then we get hungry, we get caught out, then we binge eat, comfort eat, then all of a sudden we're like, right, tomorrow I'm going harder, tomorrow I'm going harder. We fall into that trap and it reaches a point where actually it's not working. And we just need to reset things and go, I'm just going to eat normally tomorrow. Protein every meal, straight in, done. But these are just some strategies that you can do and weave in to your busiest day. So whether that's having some ready meals in the, in the freezer, which are fine, by the way. It doesn't have to be optimal. It's always about thinking about what the alternative is. Like, I was speaking to one of the ladies, she was like, yeah, I don't really want to have ready meals. And then we, when we went through what's the alternative, she was like, well, I often end up just getting takeaway in the end if I'm really stuck. I don't want to do that, it just happens. And it's about thinking what the alternative is from a point of view of how much we're spending on food there, but also the quality of food. You can get good quality ready meals now as well. So I hope that helps. It's just uh, a chat I had yesterday with someone, so I wanted to share that and I thought other people might find it helpful. If you did find it helpful, just like, share it. Um, and any questions, as always, just let me know and I'll see you soon. Take care.